Hi everybody, it's Rita Freecott from Picked and Polished in Alexandria, New Hampshire, where I love to help you create beautiful things for your home on a budget. And today I've got these super cute monograms that we're gonna be working with. Um, I thought I'd switch things up a little bit. I know I've gotten a lot of questions, the difference between glaze and wax. And so today, instead of doing my traditional um, ho-hum lights and beiges and grays, I thought with Valentine's Day coming up, it would be really fun um, to use these little monogram windows, which I had my girls paint this morning, um, and do a little craft type of decor piece that you can use for a kid's room or your wall. Um, and so, hi Kat, thanks for hanging out today. Um, and I've got the link where I got these um, wood cutouts, they're MDF wood cutouts, and they're from Build Across. And they sent these to me and they're just adorable. Um, and they hold up really well with the paint. And, um, and they're gonna look super cute once I get glazing and waxing on them. So today we're using some more fun, bright colors. I'm using Dixie Belle's Peony Pink and Dixie Belle's Mermaid Tail on this one. And then um, I'm going to be using pearlescent glaze, gold glaze, because I want to show you the difference between some of the metallic glazes. And then I'm going to show you what, how to use the wax. Um, so they work differently uh, and they're a different consistency. And I get a lot of questions about what is the difference between the two. Sorry about that weird glow over here. It's just I tried a few different ways to block it, but it's just the way it's going to be today. So. Um, and I've got my kids home with me today and my husband, everybody's got the day off from school. And this is like the section of my house behind me that doesn't have Uno cards everywhere. So um, so anyway, so we're gonna get, get started. One of the exciting things about this project today is the Build Across company said that I could give you guys a 20% 20, 20 off discount on any of their products. And these were only like, I think they're only like $9 on their site. So go check out their page. Um, I've got the link above you can click on. And if you use the code picked and polished 20, you get 20% off your total order. So that's really cool. Um, I get to like pass on some cool coupons to you guys with my promo code. So um, they've got a good jillion different cutouts and I don't wanna give away too much, but my next live, I'm gonna be doing something with this adorable window, which I can't wait. Um, right, these are so cool. You can do lots of different things. So you could make these like a door hanger and you could dress them up more for like an adult version. But today we're gonna to do a little like fun kids room um, craft or decor piece with glaze and wax. So um, I just, I've been using a lot of whites and grays and stuff lately because we've been talking a lot about kitchen cabinet painting and people tend to want to go more towards neutrals, but I thought that this would be super fun, right? You can, so you, if you guys go to the Build Across site, um, they have so many, you guys are going to be blown away. They've got great prices for one. You guys know I'm always all about doing things on a budget. So they've got great prices and you can get 20% off of those prices using my special coupon code. That's exciting, right? Um, hi, Donna. Hi, Katie. Thanks for hopping on today. Um, so we're going to get going. I use the Dixie Belle, or my kids use the Dixie Belle Peony Pink and um, the Mermaid Tail. And this would be a great thing to do with kids, too. My little ones needed some help getting into the tiny little crevices, but for the most part, they got everything painted. This one, I even I wanted to see how well these would distress. And I did some light distressing because I want to give this one like a beachy feel. This is the monogram H, and I'm pretty sure they asked me when I ordered um, the products what if I wanted any specific monograms, and I think, you know how I get, I'm a little bit flaky, and I flaked out and was like, oh, whatever, and I got an H and a W, and my kids' initials aren't H and W. I don't even think I was thinking about my kids' initials at that time, obviously. So um, I'm going to have to find somebody to home these to, to give these to for their bedrooms. So I've got an H and a W monogram, super cute. Um, we'll start off with, I think, the glaze today. Um, hi, Susan. I'm so glad you guys are on today. I've been missing you. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with the pearlescent glaze. As you can see, this is like super well-loved. It's almost gone. This is the Dixie Belle glaze. 
um, and the glaze has a total different consistency than a wax. It's like um, like a satin clear coat consistency. It's liquidy. So let me open up the, the gold and show you. And so they work differently because they have a different, um, you can maneuver them differently because they're a different consistency. So this is more of a jelly liquid type, type um, product. And then the Dixie Belle Bestang Wax is like... Crisco or like a soft butter product, okay? So obviously with a product like this, you're gonna have a little bit more control. So if I were doing a big project, like a piece of furniture or kitchen cabinets, I would wanna clear coat over my paint before I start glazing and waxing because that will definitely give me more freedom to wipe off where I might not like where I get it um, or to add more in spots. Um, and it doesn't go on quite as heavy when you have a clear coat base. But when I go directly over the paint, it's more chalky and porous, so it's gonna absorb more of the product. And I'm okay with that with today's, today's, product, uh, today's project. Can it take the place of wax? So yes, yeah, so I use, I don't use wax typically anymore ever as like a protective coating. I use it more as like a decorative finish. So to accent things, to frame things out, to create shadows and highlights. Um, so that's what my purpose of wax is. It can be used as a protective layer. It's not as durable as like a satin gloss flat clear coat or the gator hide. Um, but it does, the glaze has um, some clear coat built into it. So that's got a little bit of more protection, I think, than maybe like a wax. But if you're gonna do cabinets or a piece of furniture, if you're using wax or glaze, you're gonna to wanna to clear coat first, okay? So that way you have, it's not gonna work itself into the product as much, um, unless you want like a super grungy look. And typically when I'm doing cabinets, I'm gonna clear coat and then glaze and then clear coat again, just so I can really, if I need to really scrub something, I can without worrying about the glaze scrubbing off, even though it's got a clear coat built in, into it. When I do furniture pieces, I just do the glaze, I do my paint, clear coat, glaze, and that's my, my final final bit. Unless it's going into like my little girl's room who's like, you know, might be really rough on something. Then I might do a one more layer of clear coat over it. So <clears throat> the wax can be used as a protective finish, but if you have little ones running around or animals and stuff, I just think like why not throw a clear coat on over it um, or under it. And the nice thing is they're all water-based. It's a plant-based wax, so you can put it under the clear coat or you can put it over the clear coat. And that goes for any of the satin, the gloss, the flat, or the gator hide. So you don't have to worry so much about, ooh, can I, you know, can I do this first or this second? It always used to be the rule that you did wax last, and that's not the case with these products anymore. Because they're water-based, they work together seamlessly. So they're real easy to use. So typically with wax, it hits the high points unless you work it into the low points, okay? So like if I had, um, something like this. I have this as an example. I did some glaze on this, not over here, but down here. If I wanted to work wax into these crevices, I certainly could. Um, but when you're feathering wax on with a dry brush uh, or a chip brush, then it's pretty much just going to hit the edges and the high points and frame things out, okay? And you have a little more control over where it goes because it's a, it's a, it's a, like a, buttery consistency. The glaze though, it's wet like a paint. So to be able to just, you know, um, hit an edge and not maybe, maybe I don't want to get into the crevices, but I just want to frame something out. That's a little bit trickier with the glaze. Glaze is great for sitting in the low points like this. Okay. See how it sits in those crevices or all over. It works really nicely too. If you want to get a full surface and maybe you want your crevices to be a little darker, you can go a little heavier and, and just let it kind of sit in there um, and dry in those, those um, design areas, you know, those little detail areas like right here, right here, right here. Um, and I'll, I'll use this in a little bit to show you what I mean about that. Um, and I've also done a couple other lives about the glaze too. If you guys have any questions, you can refer back to those. I'm working hard at getting um, my live videos onto my YouTube channel, Picked and Polished with Rita, so that they're really easy to access and you don't have to go through all my Facebook videos to try to find things. Um, so that will be really super helpful, I think. All right, so 
With wax, you can apply it with a cloth, like with your finger. And if you're gonna use a cloth, use something that's lint-free and something that's kind of thin so you can manipulate, you know what you're touching and where it's going. If it's a thicker cloth, it's gonna be harder to control where your finger's going, right? And where the wax is going. Um, and you can also use a chip brush to kind of feather things, feather wax on all over. Um, <clears throat> or if you want something to look really waxed and grungy, you could rub it all over and rub it in. Um, I like the glaze if I want something all over because it's a little less, um, it's a little less streaky. Whereas like with the wax, if I wanted it really heavy, it would be hard to get it on over a surface without like making it look as streaky. I don't know if that makes sense. I do have a technique I'm going to show you today on how to get wax all over something, but keep it subtle and keep it even. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. And I'm also going to show you how to apply the glaze. Glaze can be wiped on and then wiped off. Um, one thing with the glaze that I always tell people when they're using it is just keep in mind that we're going to start with a pearlescent glaze. So it looks white, but it's actually... Um, just going to give like a pearlescent shimmer to this. Um, you guys okay? Sorry, I just down in the room. Um, my husband's home luckily, so I know everybody is cool and safe in our little acorn sized house. So the pearlescent glaze, I'm just going to paint it on. Um, let's see. So I've got, so do you see how it just gives it a little bit of, of shimmer there? And you can go over wax with glaze too, with the Dixie Belle stuff. You can go under wax with glaze. I mean, it's like really interchangeable. So can you guys see the difference there? This is with the pearlescent glaze over here and this isn't, okay? So it tones down the pink a little bit. It's gonna give it a little bit of, um, of shimmer, but not like obnoxious amounts of shimmer. Just like, not that there's any such thing, because I do love glitter. Let's see here. So we're going to just do that. I'm going to get the glaze all over. And let's say if I was doing like a dark glaze, I went, maybe I go too heavy in a spot. I'm just going to use a baby wipe. Actually, I let mine dry out. And I can still, even though I haven't clear coated, I can still wipe some off. Okay, so it's not the end of the world. Let's say I go too heavy. And this was like a black glaze or a grunge glaze and I wanted it to be lighter, I can wipe a little off with um, with a baby wipe. So as long as you don't let it dry, you're, you're good. One thing I think some people can do with glaze that can be frustrating is they can overwork it. So when it's trying to dry, it needs to kind of be left alone. And then if you have spots that you missed or spots you want to touch up, you want to let it dry and then go back to it and then add in those areas. Otherwise, what's going to happen is when it's in that <clears throat> phase of trying to dry, you're going to lift it up off the surface and you're going to make like a little patch in that area, which is fine. You can always go back over. You guys know my motto. You don't get in a panic. You go back over it with some paint and you're good. You can just touch it up afterwards. So even if something happens to where you're like, oh, I don't really like the way that looks, it's fine. You just let it dry and you paint over it. I could go back over it with the um, peony paint if I want. So if I were going to put this um, wood cut out on a door and as a door hanger, um, because it's MDF, I would definitely clear coat with gator hide. Um, and I probably wouldn't put it in like exposed to like direct weather. So you can see um, already there's a difference between where the pearlescent glaze is and where the plain pink is. Can you guys see that on the camera? Um, and I've posted, for those of you that just hopped on, I posted a link above. You guys get the 20% off coupon if you, for Build Across products if you use the code Picked and Polished 20. Um, and they do, they have a billion different things. I'm, right now I'm obsessed with their, um, let me just show you this again. They have all these different window cutouts that are amazing, you guys. I'm like, I can't wait to start doing a bunch of products, uh, projects with those. Those are gonna be so much fun. And they're affordable. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so I'm just gonna keep brushing this on lightly. Um, let me see how that goes on. Pretty neatly, and then, um, 
So that's basically how the pearlescent glaze works. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. I haven't done the whole thing, but I wanna show you the wax. So I will finish this up, but I wanna give you an idea of the difference between like a wax and a glaze, okay? So I'm gonna let some of this dry and then I'll go back to it. And if we have time, I'll finish it. All right, so I've got some of the pearlescent glaze on and some not, some of it's drying. It's just gonna give it that a little layer of something extra and special. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know what's going on with my voice today. Okay, so the wax, um, and it, it will apply differently, it will sit differently on the surface if it is, um, it will sit differently on the surface if your surface is clear coated, okay? Because that gives you like a barrier in between the porous surface and like a nice smooth surface. Hi, Kathy, hi, Betty. Um, and so I'm just gonna, put a little bit of wax, like a tiny, tiny bit of wax on my brush, okay, you guys? And when I say tiny, I mean tiny. So that much, and then I'm gonna just kind of tap it off and make sure that I don't have any, what I call splooges. And this is a super cheap chip brush. I think they're like $2 on my site. You can grab them at Walmart or I'm sure the Dollar Tree has them, but they probably, I get the ones that where the bristles don't fall out a lot. Um, and then I'm just going to watch what happens when I go over the surface with the wax with like a tiny, tiny bit of wax, okay? It's going to pick up the edges and kind of frame out the lettering. So I'm just going to touch it gently. A little bit more. And it's going to give it kind of like a little beachy look. Again, I'm just putting a little bit of wax on, the best dang wax, and they sell them in um, the smaller sizes that you would, most of you probably would never need a size this big. So I've had mine for a couple of years and I still haven't used them all. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit the edges and kind of brush over. And I'll show you, I'll just do this half and you can kind of see what happens and you have to be patient because it takes a minute for it to start to show up um, but if you want it to be subtle this is a great technique to use so i'll show you the difference between the left side and the right side of this piece the side that i've waxed with white i'm using their white wax to give it like a beachy sort of feel like a salt wash sort of feel it's very soft and this technique is good too because it doesn't it doesn't leave like big streaks if you do it with just a little bit of wax on there. Okay, I'm go a little bit more so you can see it for the camera because right now I feel like you guys can't see what I'm seeing here. There we go, going a little bit heavier. Okay, and this is a great technique to use on furniture if it has like appliques or um, you know, all over something if you wanted to give it like that washed sort of look or if you use a light color with a dark wax, this is how you get like that farmhousey sort of waxed feel to something. Okay, see the difference you guys between the top and the bottom? It softened the color, it blended the color, and it sort of frames out my letter, my letter over here. Okay, and if I want to go darker, let's say I'm like, you know what, I really want the edges to be like more framed out. What I would do is just, I'm gonna go over the whole thing really quick, now that I have it down. I'm gonna go a little heavier so you guys can see. But just, you know, when you start out with this technique, just less is more, and then as you get comfortable with it, you can add more wax as you go. But this is a great project to, to use wax on because it really, once you add the wax, I feel like it like makes it look more, um, I don't know, there's like, it's like that black dress without the earrings or the shoes, you know? You kind of need a little something added to make it feel extra special um, or something a little different or more customized. And I think the wax and the glaze are the products that really add that extra something special. Okay. So here we go. So we've got the white wax on the surface. All right, and then I'm gonna say, okay, can you guys see that? See how cute that is? 
Yeah, it definitely gives it a finished look, Betty. And it adds some depth and dimension and some texture too. So now I'm going to say, okay, you know what? I really want to add some more um, detail around the H because I want that. Maybe I want that to show up more. Or maybe I just want the edges to show more. You know, you could do that. So I just take a little bit of wax on my thin cloth. Okay. And I'm just going to rub around the edges of my H. And it looks a little clumpy at first. But I'm going to go back over that and wipe off some of the wax. Okay, so that it won't, it'll look more um, organic, like it was supposed to be that way. Um, and this has got a lot of curves, so this would be, you know, I would have to take some time to hit all the points and give it that framed out sort of feel. But you'll see the difference between the one side where I'm kind of framing it out and where I'm not. I just love projects like this because you can just customize them so easily. These make great little gifts too for birthdays and Valentine's Day is coming up. I just get this one little area here. Okay. Let's see. Let me know if you guys have questions, okay? Um, and definitely check out the Build Across website, you guys. It's They've got tons of cool stuff for great prices. Can't wait to do more projects with their items. Okay. So, if I were trying to just frame this out with glaze, that would be hard because it's liquid, all right? So, the wax, do you see how that's easier to control? See how this side of the H, whoops, this side of the H is more framed out than this side, right? Because I went all the way around it with the white wax. And then I just can kind of rub it in. Yes, oh my gosh, so much easier, Kat. Then it, like, let's say you wanted to give this a two-tone look with paint. Oh man, going around all these edges with a different color paint would be, no, I, I wouldn't. My hand's not steady enough. If you have a really steady hand and the perfect brush, you might be able to really nail it. But for me, this is so much easier. You could also do, the, if you wanted to dry brush some paint over that, you could do the same technique as I just did with the wax, but with paint. But you would use like a little bit of paint on the brush and it would be dry. That's why they call it, you know, the dry brush technique. So that is, um, that is why I would use wax. If I had like a flat cabinet door and I just wanted to give it like a, um, like frame it out if I had no, no details, no inlays. I would probably use my clear coat and then wax around the edge just to kind of shadow it or give it some framing. Oh, I've got wax on my hand. Um, and it doesn't smell either, which is nice. Um, and But if I had some inlays or details that I really wanted to highlight or if I had some low points where I wanted the glaze to sit, I would use the glaze. So that's the difference in how to use those on cabinets. And then you can see on something like this, the wax gives it gives you a little bit more control to frame things out. Um, so I think that's adorable with the white wax around the H. I'm gonna continue that. Do you guys like the do you guys like the white wax around the H to frame it out better than this side? Give me a heart if you like this side better. Um, I just feel like it just, I don't know, it's super cute. Um, and then I'll do, I'll go ahead and do the, um, the pink one with more pearlescent. And you can see here, see where the pearlescent is and where it isn't. It's, there's no pearlescent glaze there. And then there's um, pearlescent glaze in the center. Hi, Patty. That's okay. You can watch the replay anytime. All my videos are on my Facebook page. You can watch the replay. So. Um, check out, definitely you guys check out the Build Across website. The link is above. Um, and if you want any of these products, they're in my Picked and Polished website page, which is also linked above for you. Message me if you have any, any questions at all. Um, hi, Penny. Thanks for hanging out. Hi, Lynn. Thanks for popping on today. All right, so I'm just going to go over the rest of this with a pearlescent. And I could do this with any color. Like if I had one of these and I wanted to make it a farmhousey look, 
I might do like a drop cloth color and then do the black glaze over it or the grunge glaze and that would look really cute on one of these for a front door or for a wall in your um, your gallery wall this would be something like this would be adorable for that um, I'm just gonna keep going with my glaze and you can see you guys I'm not like getting too I'm not like it's not it's not hard to use like I'm not being overly careful with it got some spots that I missed but I want to go over this glaze with the gold so I'm just kind of rushing a little bit because I want you to see that you can layer glazes too and you can if I wanted to glaze pearlescent over the wax I could do that um, and that actually would be really pretty and anytime you go over wax with a clear coat it kind of blends it a little bit because it pulls it around so if you are waxing something and you're like, you know, I just want it to look a little more blended, I want a little more protection, grab some satin clear coat or the gator hide if you're doing like a, you know, a really, a piece that's going to get a lot of, um, of use, heavy use, um, and just go right over the wax with it. And you can, it'll kind of blend it together for you, which is nice. All right, so I think I got all the areas that are on the surface. I'll have to go back and get the interior little parts of this, but I definitely like the pearl, right? Isn't that pretty? And then I'll go over it with the, um, I'm gonna go over it with the, the gold. So I usually shake up any of the liquid products before I use them. So did you spray your brush to apply more glaze? I don't think so. Um, you can you can use a damp brush with the glaze though. Um, that's totally fine. I don't think it's gonna matter much, but it might help it from dragging. Does that make sense? Like from dragging when you go to um, when it starts to dry on your brush. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead over the pearlescent with the gold shimmer glaze, and you guys can see that really they work together. Like you don't have to just use one; you can layer which I feel like is what um, can set like an ordinary piece of decor or furniture apart from something that feels really special. Um, when you start to layer your waxes and your glazes, um, you know, and it's not always so much about, you know, how much experience you have with something. Sometimes it's just giving it a try. And then the worst case scenario, like if I didn't like the gold glaze, I would just paint over it with the peony and I would, um, I would try again, right? It wouldn't be a big deal. You can just paint right over it. I do really like the gold shimmer, though, you guys, over that. It kind of like, I don't know, it picks up a little bit more light. I think that would be super cute in a girl's room. Um, so that's a good question, Betty. It depends on the application. It depends on your brush. So if I were doing glaze on a big piece, I would definitely use one of the synthetic Dixie Bell brushes, which I have here. Um, I would probably, like on a bigger piece, I use the round, large round and the large flat. You can also get a really smooth sponge and apply it with a brush and wipe it smooth with a sponge. Um, you do have to, if you're going to be doing glaze on a bigger piece, it's always good to practice on something smaller first, like a, you know, just a board you have laying around or, um, or whatever. It does pull up though if you don't let it just dry. So if you see a spot that you missed, you're better off to just kind of let it be and let it dry than to try to force it and keep rubbing and rubbing because then you're gonna be pulling that up. Whereas the wax is a little bit more forgiving. You can kinda, of, if you're going over a clear coat with a clear coated surface with wax, you can kind of, you know, same thing with the glaze, you can wipe, wipe it off before it dries, but the wax just has a, it takes longer to dry and cure than the glaze. So you have a little bit more wiggle room with the wax, if that makes sense to you guys. So um, I hope this tutorial was really informative and kind of explained and showed the difference between a wax and a glaze and the dif difference of why you would use one over the other, um, because I think that can get kind of confusing too. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions. Beth saying, I decided to repaint a dated shining gold bathroom mirror last night in rustic red. Ooh, really? I can't see the rest of that, but I can't wait to see it. I hope she's in my kitchen cabinet painting group. Um, so if you guys are interested in learning how to paint your kitchen cabinets, 
you only have until Friday night to sign up for that group. It's $45 and you get um, four classes, virtual classes in my group, and then you own them after you get in the group. I can email them to you when the group closes in March. So um, the doors close for new members this Friday, but then I do all my lessons in there. You guys have feedback. I help you, you know, with your orders or figure out what products you need and how much you need. And then by the end, in, at March 1st, we'll, we'll close the actual interactive piece, but then you get the video, all the video content, the table of contents, you get the supply list, which is clickable. I mean, you could, it's so easy to use. Um, and I'm in there to help you and walk you through your project. So shoot me a message if you have any questions about that. I hope this was super helpful today. And I will post pictures of these when they're totally done. They're adorable. Now I need to find little girls with the name W and H around um, our little area to find these to put them in their rooms. So. Um, thank you, Build Across, for sending these to me because I absolutely love them. And remember, you guys, next up are these adorable um, window cutouts. They have a bajillion different styles on their website, so check them out. You get, um, oh, thank you, Beth. I'm so glad. And that's, we're not even knee deep yet. I can't wait to really get going. Um, uh, definitely check out their site because you guys will love their stuff. So have a wonderful day. Um, stay warm if you're in New England, and I'll see you guys. Those of you that are in my kitchen cabinet group, I'll see you guys tomorrow. The rest of you I'll see on Tuesday for our live video. And I'm not exactly sure exactly what I'm going to do, but it's going to involve one of those windows. So I hope you guys can join me. Have a wonderful day. Bye.